Welcome to Strip Cover Lit, where we wrestle the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Fort. And I'm Dalton Gentry. Where the hell did that come from? Don't be weird. Okay. We're here for a review. Purchase. Robert Frost. Which is one of, if not the most, energetic poems I have ever read. Okay. Energetic and lighthearted. I figured I would start the show off right. It just caught me off guard. Yeah. Fair enough. Would so you... much energy in this poem. Yeah. Uh, so we, we are here for a review, so we will have uh, a reading of the poem, three good things, three bad things, best line from the poem, literary analysis, rating, and recommendation based on the text <clears throat> itself. Now that's a long one, so we're going to have just one reading this time. We chose Let Adrian do the reading. It is a difficult poem to read, a difficult poem to read aloud, so I'm going to screw things up. Birches. When I see birches bend to left and right across the lines of straighter, darker trees, I like to think some boy's been swinging them. But swinging doesn't bend them down to stay as ice storms do. Often you must see them loaded with ice a sunny winter morning after a rain. They click upon themselves as the breeze rises and turn many colored, as the stir cracks and crazes their enamel. Soon the sun's warmth makes, th makes them shed crystal shells, shattering and avalanching on the snow crust, such heaps of broken glass to sweep away. You'd think the inner dome of heaven had fallen. They are dragged to the withered bracken by the load, and they seem not to break, though once they are bowed. So long, so low for long, they never right themselves. I want to redo that part. <laughs> and they seem not to break, though once they are bowed, they seem so low for so long, they never right themselves. You may see their trunks arching in the woods years afterward, trailing their leaves on the ground like girls on hands and knees that throw their hair before them over their heads to dry in the sun. But I was going to say when truth broke in with all her matter of fact about the ice storm. I should prefer to have some boy bend them as he went out and in to fetch the cows. Some boy too far from town to learn baseball whose only play was what he found himself summer or winter and could play alone. One by one, he subdued his father's trees, writing them down over and over again until he took the stiffness out of them. And not one but hung limp. Not one was left for him to conquer. He learned all there was to learn about not launching out too soon as, and so not carrying the tree away clear to the ground. He always kept his poise to to the top branches climbing carefully with the same pains as you use to fill a cup up to the brim and even above the brim. Then he flung outward, feet first with a swish, kicking his way down through the air to the ground. So was I once myself a swinger of birches, and so I dream of going back to be. It's when I'm weary of considerations and life is too much like a pathless wood where your face burns and tickles with the cobwebs broken across it and one eye is weeping from a twig's having lashed across it open. I'd like to get away from the earth a while and then come back to do it and begin it over. May no fate willfully misunderstand me and half grant what I wish and snatch me away not to return. Earth's the right place for love. I don't know where it's likely to go better. I'd like to go by climbing, climbing a birch tree and climb back up branches, up a snow-white trunk toward heaven till the tree could bear no more but dipped its top and set me down again. That would be good both going and coming back. One could do worse than being a swinger of birches. Robert Frost. And tongue-tyingly long. Golly. Okay. And see, the, the, the worst part of that, I read this thing three times over right before we filmed. Yep. Still couldn't do it. 
I'm going to get into that with my bad okay. things here, but I'm going to start here with three good things, okay? okay? Uh, this poem is loaded with metaphor and great imagery. Absolutely. Uh, this is both an approachable and very comfortable poem. And there's a beautiful simplicity in this, both through the literal text and through the interpretation. My three good things. One, this is a great example, ironically, of the lyricism of Frost. Okay. But it's within certain sections mm -hmm. of the poem, not the poem long. Okay. Number two. You get the rug pulled out from under you with this poem, and boy, is it a shot to the gut. Okay. Number three, I think this is a very good poem with which to illustrate metaphor. I agree with you. Three bad things. What are yours? Uh, the conversational tone of this poem sometimes makes it feel fall, uh, makes it fall flat. Uh, Frost is a nature poet, and if that's off-putting to you and you don't care about nature, this is going to do nothing for you. And finally, you can get completely lost trying to find the rhythm of this piece. As we've proven. Yeah. Uh, my three bad things, number one, I think the second quarter of this poem loses focus a bit. Okay. Um, number two, I wonder if the line, so was I, so was I over my, what, what is it? So was I once myself a swinger of birches. I wonder if that's too much. Okay. I think we could get there without being without directly having. told okay. it. Uh, and number three, heaven. Heaven. Heaven? Heaven. Don't like seeing it in poetry. Interesting. Interesting here. Uh, I, I'm not sure why people love Robert Frost. I am not. I am not a huge Robert Frost fan. But man, the man has a fan base. He is a legend in the world of poetry, but I just can't get behind Robert Frost. Do and you have a favorite line before we get there? I do. I okay. do. Uh, a, a lengthy Hate line Hate to call here. me down when you're going. But. I know. Son of a bitch. Now I'm never going to get started again. Uh, my favorite. <laughs> but it's uphill. It's all uphill. It's one man's journey. Uh, <laughs> soon the sun's warmth makes them shed crystal shells, shattering and avalanching on the snow crust. Such heaps of broken glass to sweep away, you'd think the inner dome of heaven had fallen. Let me get you, I want to get that heaven line yeah, in there because you didn't like to. it. Anyway. Uh, what is interesting about that is it's not capitalized. Um, my favorite line, I'd like to get away from the earth a while. And then come back to it and begin over. Okay. Let's talk about a little bit about heaven. I okay. think that's a good place to start. No, where were you going? Where were you going? You don't understand why Robert Frost... I don't understand why Robert Frost... I don't like Robert Frost. I, I can't get behind it. I don't enjoy it. It's just... It's him talking about fucking trees or fucking apples. And like, there's... I don't like it. I don't know. Why do you like this? Why do you like that? I, Robert Frost doesn't work for me. Ooh, I think I'm going to talk you into this one. You think so? There's a lot going there's on There's some here. stuff going on here, but still, I'm just not crazy about it. Okay. Um, but the idea of heaven, I think, is a good place to start. Just real quickly, before we leave that point, you realize, every time I do the Dalton impression, mm -hmm. you take the Dalton impression straight into the Dalton. Huh. I don't know! I don't know! I don't know! Huh. And then you take it right into whatever you're doing. It's like, you know, you got to jump start your car. you got to pull start your lawnmower. <laughs> you got to get it started. The idea of heaven. Robert Frost was a Christian man, right? I believe so, yeah. He was a very Christian man. I, that would be poetry. my immediate assumption. Uh, Robert Frost talks about heaven in this piece quite a bit. I, this has a very strange feel to it where it's not about a Christian heaven where there are other options here. Because Robert Frost talks about there's no better place than Earth. If you look at the Christian faith, what's better than Earth? It's heaven. That's the eventual goal, baby. That's where we're getting. Robert Frost talks about wanting to get away from this, to come back and be born again. Do it again. That's reincarnation. That's a little weird there, Robert, if we're of the good Christian faith. And as you pointed out that I didn't even notice, heaven's not capitalized once in this. Yeah. Is heaven an idea in this, where it's maybe an idea beyond the Christian faith? Because it does not feel like a Christian reading. Well, so for me, what we're getting into here is the actual interpretation that, that I have okay. for this. Um, so, depression, huh? Okay. This feels a lot like a poem about depression. Heavy burdens. Um, and when you start looking at things that way... So for, for a lot of people, they're, before they lose their faith... There is a great depression. Okay. And after they lose their faith, in the wake of losing their faith, there is a great depression. Okay. And I think that oftentimes it is with or through the lens of depression that, that people end up doing a little bit of landscaping in their idea of God. Okay. Right? You're not changing the yard. 
you're still living in the Christian house. But you know what? It, if I planted a couple trees over there, I couldn't really see the neighbor's hedges. Okay. And if I planted a couple flowers over here, maybe things would be a little bit prettier in the spring. It's through these dark times that a lot of people mold or landscape their idea of what, what religion is. And to me, we get a little bit of that going on, but it is, like you say, very earth-based. Yes. Um, I, I think we're going to have similar interpretations here in a sense, which is a good thing. It's never bad. Uh, but would you like to carry on a little bit about well, that? or Birches themselves. Yes. One of the most notable thing about birches is they have a very thin bark. Okay. So when we're speaking about birches in this sense, I think that this thin bark is the thin skin of someone who is easily brought down. Okay. Because we have, um, we have an inference to straighter, darker trees. These are trees that have accepted the dark nature of the world that we live in. Okay. So they become a little more hardened. They're straighter. They're darker. As opposed to the birches, which are still uh, wishy-washy, flipping around, thin-skinned, right? So I think that this is uh, sort of a, a, a metaphor for the depression itself. Okay. Right? Um, when you are depressed, it's not just a great sadness. It's sadness and anger, sadness and regret, sadness and missing someone, right? So there's so many things going on there that you're just sort of uh, everywhere with it. But birches, birch, can also be a verb. Okay. It is a verb uh, shorthand for flogging. So it is being beaten to birch, yes. to birch someone. Okay. Um, so I think that that is, when you start looking at things through a Christian lens, that's what the world's supposed to do to you, right? Yeah, the world's supposed to beat you down a little yeah. bit. Test the, your faith. The ways of God are mysterious. Okay. Um, I, I, I will agree with you here. There is some um, good sense of depression going on here. Uh, where does that come from, however? I, I believe here we have an a narrator who is obviously an older person. Uh, he's lived his life. He's swung on the birches before, and he's reminiscing. Uh, when you go through that stage of your life, you can either go one of two ways. You can look back fondly in your memories and you know, embrace it, what you learned, what you took back. Or you can look back and have your regrets. Want that life back. This very much seems like an older person who's looking back on the life that he once had that he no longer will. He wants to be the child again. He wants to be swinging from the birches again. He wants to be literally touching heaven and then returning to earth. That going back to his youth. So it's very much about, in my opinion, the loss of youth, the loss of innocence, and that coping that you have to do towards the end of your life. He's questioning heaven. He's questioning what the afterlife is going to hold for him. And he wants to climb to the top. He wants to reach that heaven. But he doesn't want to leave the earth. Well, it's all, yeah, and it's also a very playful manner. Right? Yes, um, yeah. So we have, we have the constant intimation of children, um, which, which to me very much sells this... Um, as a depressive episode um, brought on by an event which has caused him or, or her, we don't, we don't, mis oh no, it's a, it's a him because it's, he was a boy, mm -hmm. um, a contemplation of one's own mortality. Oftentimes that's where we have an intimation of children in literature, right? Okay. Um, it's not the kid writing the poem for sure. So it is an older person reflecting on youth. Uh, and why would you reflect on youth besides to question your own mortality? Okay. Um, it is um, otherwise not a, a productive means of thought, I don't think. But um, we, we, we do have this small excerpt here. I should prefer to have some boy bend them as he went out and in to fetch the cows. Some boy too far from town to learn baseball, whose only play was what he found himself, summer or winter, and could play alone. One by one, he subdued his father's trees by writing them down over and over again until he took the stiffness out of them. And not one but hung limp. Not one was left for him to conquer. That's a very sad image, isn't it? It is. It is. A kid who has no one with which to play. Yes. He's alone. He's alone, doing work. Yes. But he finds a way to play anyway because that's what people do. Um, but this also is sort of a small statement that everything happens for a reason okay. and no suffering is wasted. Okay. Is it not? I could go with that, yeah. Um, b because he's, he's not 
he's not a victim playing with these trees. He has conquered them. Absolutely. There's none left it's for him escape. to conquer. Yeah. Okay. Um, there is some good stuff going on with this, though. Although, like I said, I'm not a fan of Frost. Uh, the imagery in this is wonderful. Um, just real quick. Uh, yeah, please. Just not to get away from that. Um, so if these birches that are, are... Birches, if we're looking at this as a symbol for a depressed person. Okay. A, a birch tree which is drooping would be seen as suffering from depression. Absolutely. Right? It's that burden. The weight of depression is it's often right. said. Absolutely. So what is this young man doing here? What is this young man doing? This boy who's playing by himself by bending these trees over. Lay it on me. What he's do you got? learning the heavy ways of life. Okay. He's going through depressing all of these trees. Okay. So he, he's basically learning the lessons ne necessary to move into adulthood. And to grow into one of these, what was the phrase? Um, Strong, darker trees or whatever. Straighter, darker trees. Straighter, darker trees. Uh, so he's learning the necessary lessons of life and adulthood through the innocence and play of a child. Uh, and the imagery that Frost provides. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, very, it's very difficult, isn't it? Yes. Because these are very happy very happy instances in very sad scenes yes which lead to a deeper darker understanding of the world underlying that's a good way to put it because these scenes are supposed to be uh, nice scenes it's a kid playing out in the sun enjoying himself it's the uh, ideal of the uh, nature uh, idyllic nature out there uh, where you can look out the window and you can see the trees bending over in the other snow it's a nice thing but in the grand scheme of things, it hurts, man. It hurts a little bit yeah. to look out and see all this. But we, one of the things that's so difficult about this poem is that, like I say, it is a nice image in a sad scene. Okay. Which we're getting sort of over and over again in this poem with these different little images. Oh, it's a nice, it's a nice birch tree. Yeah. Well, it's swinging around in the wind, isn't it? Right. Um, it might be by this ice depressed forever. Okay. Um, so we keep getting these s pretty things made ugly, but to what end? You know, to further your uh, depression and birch tree metaphor that you're going for here, I mean, if you weigh something down too much, if the depression becomes too heavy, that tree will break. It cracks, yeah. And that tree will die. Yeah. Okay, so just wanted to add that tidbit there. Yeah, nice, nice uh, little sprinkling of sugar on top. That's what I do. I'm just here to sprinkle the sugar. Uh, it, okay, I can get behind that. I, I do like that. And I think we do have similar ideas of where this was going uh, with the idea of someone looking back and it, it being a very somber scene in totality. Uh, I do think Frost is successful here in his use of imagery through both action and sound. Uh, there's some good things going on with that there, and you get some good imagery through that that really does paint this scene. Uh, as the stir cracks and crazes their enamel, um, the, I, I talked about the shattering and avalanching upon the snow crust, broken across it, the one eye weeping, a twig having lashed across it. You get some good mental images here, some good momentum going with this, some things that are happening that are adding to the piece. We talk a lot about uh, actions that are happening that's not happening. It's just action. Yep. It's just there to move the story forward. But everything here seems to add to the overall imagery of this piece. And that is well done. It is. Uh, this is very easy to see, very easy to relate to, which is great. It's just sometimes hard to find that in the jumble of words because I, there's no rhythm to this. It's well, all over um, the place. Keep the word rhythm in mind because I want to make the small point um, to your previous part of the argument before okay. that. You, you talked about the lashing across the, the open eye. Yes. This hap Listen to the scene in which this happens. So was I once myself a swinger of birches and so I dream of going back to be. It's when I'm weary of considerations and life is too much like a pathless wood when I'm lost in the woods. Okay. I want to go back to swinging from the trees when everything is too much, yeah. when everything is overwhelming me, I just want to play in the trees. Um, and life is too much like a pathless wood, where your face burns and tickles with the cobwebs, broken across it, and one eye is weeping, 
from a twig's having lashed across it open. From a twig's having lashed across it open, the only real invocation we have of a tree is the birch, right? Okay. That's the subject of the poem, birches. Yes. So when we're, we're saying a twig, our mind is left to go back to the birch. Yes. What is to be birched? To be flogged. So you're to expecting be lashed. it. Yeah. You're expecting it by very definition. Okay. So when life gets to be too much, I want to go back to being young and swinging from the trees. But life is too hairy. Life is too much. And by the definition of life, I should have known that. By the very definition of life, I should have known that. Okay. Um, I'm wh- still not which, sure you're selling which me on Frost. swings out, and where does it hit you? It lashes them in an open eye. In an open eye. That's yeah, not fun. Ruins the way you're seeing the world. Okay. Blinds you. Blinds you to the world. Um, except for the pain. Except for the pain. Blinds you to the beauty. Dulls you to the pain. I feel like you're trying to sell me on this one a lot. You really are. But I, I'm just, I'm still not crazy about it, honestly. Well, so the rhythm aspect. Yes. One of the, so Robert Frost is a writer of poetry who is very much not afraid to employ a period. Okay, that's a good thing. I'm uh, fine with that. I'm fine with that. But what <clears throat> it means is, and what's very difficult about that style of poetry, is that your line breaks are not there for rhythm. Okay. Your line breaks are to be read through, um, no, not, not universally, whatever, right? But your line breaks are meant to be read through, though there may be some visual component which adds to the overall theme of the text. Okay. So all of these places where I stutter... Like, some of it is because of constant consonants cracking your tongue. Okay. Right. But a lot of the places where I stutter is because I want to breathe at that line break. But you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to. Because the very first line, when I see birches bend to the left and right across the lines of straighter, darker trees, I like to think some boy has been swinging them. That's where your breaks are. One's a comma on the end of the second line. At the third line, we have a period. But swinging doesn't bend them down to stay as ice storms do. There's a very nice rhythm there. Okay. There's a very nice lyricism there. But where the way it looks on the page, but swinging doesn't bend them down to stay. Okay. As ice storms do. Right? You you get a very... You, You're you adding that in on your own. Yeah. Okay. You, you, it, if not... By your reading, at least visually. Okay. That's what you end up doing. So you are meant, you're not going to get the rhythm of this on the first read. Fair. Um, with, with, for example, Bukowski, oftentimes, there are so few places to lose rhythm that you just zoom through the poem. Okay. Robert Frost does not write in that fashion. No. Um, wholeheartedly, this is the polar opposite of Bukowski, in my opinion. Um, do you have anything else you really want to hit on here on Birches real quick before we finish this up? Uh, do you have anything you need to... I don't. I think I'm comfortable with this. I am ready to rate it. Rating uh, and recommendation? If you're good there. Okay. What would you give this piece? Uh, every time I read this poem, I like it a little bit more. Okay. Because I see the... I see everything compounded upon itself. Okay. And um, so I would give this 90 willfully misunderstood out of 100. 90 willfully misunderstood. I'd give this 85 lashings. Uh, better than average, but just, it, it's, it's okay. But it exists. Great. It's not great for me. What would you recommend? Um, if you like this, I think you would like Anthem for Doomed Youth by Wilfred Owen. Okay. Um, I think that there are some haunting types of visual similarities looking at the poems. Um but I think that ultimately that that feeling, the ambiance of the poem, is what you will you will bring from these poems into one another. Okay. Whether we like this or not, this poem at least made us stretch a bit and try to find poems that we've never recommended before uh, that have the same feeling. So maybe that's a good thing. I said Sailing to Byzantium, William Butler Yeats. Really? Absolutely. I think there's a similar feel, uh, that sense of loss, that sense of escape. Uh, and I, I think they parallel well together. 
Okay. All right. I can, I, can, I can go along with that. So thank you, Robert Frost. At least we gave good recommendations. I really thought that uh, after a little bit of explanation about how this is about um, darkness. Yeah, I know. You I, would gain some, uh, some love for it. I, maybe a little I'll, bit of depressories there. Maybe I'll have to read it again in a few weeks, but I just am not crazy about it. Maybe if I just like blacked out Robert Frost and just read it as a poem. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe I just have some apprehensive for apprehensions towards Frost. Okay. Anyway, finish us out here. Uh, if you like this sort of thing, if you want to see us do more poems on Strip Cover Lit, uh, leave a suggestion in the, in the comments below what poem we might want to do next. Maybe a little bit more Robert Frost to warm Dalton up. Maybe leave a like because it really helps us out. And if you've gotten this far in the channel into the video and literature is something that you like but you have not subscribed to the channel, maybe hit that subscribe button. I don't understand why people like Robert Frost so much. I think you have to be perceptive to Robert Frost to even care. Okay. I think that if you read a Robert Frost poem, and why are we talking about this before? Don't but know. If you read a Robert Frost poem and you're not looking for the stuff, you, you're just not going to like it. Okay.